Idea actually came about one of the Wraith Rover supporter meetings here. Um, it was myself and Callum Rowan, fellow supporter. We were just chatting in, in the meeting about um, our favourite Wraith Rover shirt, what, what was our best retro shirt from the past. And we'd spoken about the, the 94 95 shirt, and that happened to be the 25th anniversary of last year. So we looked into the process of getting it. Callum had actually spoken to the club before about it, and nothing had come of it. And so I went and spoke to the club and said, Look, this is what we want to do. I've spoken to Copa, a company in Holland. They've done big teams like Juventus, Barcelona and small teams. They've done them before and then um, see, see what the situation was, what the minimum order quantity was, see how much it was going to cost. They came back with a price and then I, I went to the club and let them know. And as you can imagine with what it's like at Wraith Rovers, a club of our size, it's a bit of a gamble to be doing a five figure outlay on something like this. Um, so I actually suggested that I would pay it for my own business as a kind of zero percent interest loan give them the opportunity to get the shirts and then whatever the cult club made back I would get my money back only once we broke even so the club were delighted with that and I, we started the process and it was actually it was a lot harder than I first anticipated we went through about three or four different samples they really struggled with the white splash on the side and the white splash down the, down the, the side of the shirt but eventually we got the final sample and I think it was within three days we'd sold out all 500 shirts and the club had made about a £15,000 profit on it so the next step was obviously with the other 25th anniversary of the Byron game to, to do exactly the same again and this one thankfully was a lot easier because the shirt is a lot simpler than last year's. In terms of um, the numbers that were involved um, with, the, with the first years there, I, I'm going to be shot down if I don't ask, will there ever be a remake? Will there, can you go back and get them to dig the pattern out of the vaults? We can, but unfortunately you have to do another minimum order quantity of about three to 500. And one of the biggest pains for me was the fact that Copa don't do child sizes. I mean, for the two sides of it, A, we could have had a lot of kids running around in a 1994, 95 retro shirt, and B, the club would have made a lot more money if we could have done kids sizes. But Unfortunately, we, we looked at doing it again, but we just didn't think there would be enough demand to do another three to five hundred. What about um, kind of sourcing the jerseys that were used as the patterns? You got a wee collection tucked away, or do you yeah, go yeah. The archive? Yeah, I've got uh, I've got some retro collection. Um, yeah, mainly just shirts from the nineties. So that was it was easy enough to just send them a version. The, like I said, the big difficulty was doing the splash, but even just getting the exact colour was difficult. It came back too dark or came back too light. Um, but yeah, there's a few other I've got on my sleeve for bringing back hopefully in the future. We'll, we'll hold that. We'll try and get that information out of you off camera. The 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 jersey that's been released now, what kind of numbers have you got them in, when they're going to go on sale, what, what kind of detail have you got for the fans? We've got 500 again uh, for this, this version. One thing, well one of my concerns is that this one might not be as popular because it was more popular back then because obviously given the period that Wraith Rovers were going through I think that one of the, the, the most popular shirts was this shirt back in 95 but they go on sale tomorrow the um, 31st of October and hopefully they'll be as popular as last time and we can sell them out as quickly as we did last, uh, last season. Yeah, we've had the, the launch this morning, we've got the, um, the first team training in the background there um, chatting with Colin Cameron, does it give you an added little uh, notion of pride when you see one of our, our <laughs> great, much loved uh, local players uh, coming back and, and pulling that jersey on again and talking yeah. the, the hairs on the back of his neck standing uh, up? 100% yeah, I mean it's, uh, it actually fits him a bit better than it did back then but um, no it's great, it's great to see it and even last year with the 94-95 when we had the, the anniversary brunch just to see all the players back and they all they signed a few versions and I got one myself which was great. I wish we could have played in strips that, that fitted like this uh, back in our day at Wraith because uh, it was a case of one size fitted all way and what I was wearing Sean Dennis was wearing it was looking baggy on him so you can imagine on a windy day I had to batten down the hatches. How does it feel just there? Uh, I mean I know you've obviously, you know, you love just being around here. I mean it's all happening today. I was looking at you just kind of watching the boys coming out for training and mm -hmm. I think maybe if we could get you a pair of boots you would have fancied a wee bit kick about. Yeah, yeah I'm feeling jealous, you know, because it's in my time's been and gone, but, uh, you know, I still play sevens on a Monday. Uh, I still love it. Um, obviously the legs uh, didn't work as, as well as they used to, but um, as I say, you know, if I had a pair of boots I'd have loved to be there joining the boys. It's, it's good to see them starting the season well, you know, and uh, I'm looking forward to the season, keeping a good eye on them. Um, expect it to be pretty successful. I enjoyed um, the kind of pre-interview uh, photos that will go along with this. You were uh, photographed with our, our young midfielder Dylan Tate, mm -hmm. who's um, 
Many people say he's maybe his closer replica in terms of his ability to get up and down the park, likes to tackle, creative, scores a, a few goals, and right. we were telling him that he's double figures as the target. And one of the things that amused me greatly was we, we ran through the team from that night in Munich mm-hmm. and it meant nothing to him. No, it's a, I, 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 it just it just shows you, let's say, 25 years. You know, um, he wasn't born. <laughs> you know, incredible. when we played, so. Uh, yeah, it just makes you feel that a wee bit older, you know, I just done 48 last week. Um, I don't feel it right enough, you know, but um, in terms of you know, trying to pass on anything to Dylan, um, it's just having that enthusiasm, you know, every time, not just in games, but every time even you come out here and train and uh, apply yourself the same way. Um, and if he does that, then, you know, I'm sure he'll be successful. Let's say he's got goals in this game. Um, it's a big commodity for a, a midfielder to have, uh, and I always set myself a target. Of, you know, double figures every season. If I got that, it was a good season. If I got any more than that, it was a really good season. And I think he should be doing the same thing. You know, if he's got any aspirations, he uh, uh, doing well in his career. Um, the type of player he is, he, that's what he needs to be aiming for. The, the names that we're speaking about, I'll quickly run through. That's starting eleven in Munich: Can, Helmer, Struntz, Babel, Sforza. Haman, Herzog, Nerlinger, Ziegler, and Klinsmann and Papan. Mm. Does uh, the hair in the back of your neck stand up thinking that, uh, that that's what you went toe to toe with? Uh, I certainly at the time, yeah, obviously, because um, pretty much most of them household names, you know, uh, international uh, the highest level, uh, you know, and an unbelievable team with a, a very successful uh, history behind them. Uh, so, especially, f- I'm not not just for us younger boys. Everybody connected with the club, all the players, all the staff, all the fans. You know, it was it was something um, at this moment in time has never been repeated. Whether it will be, time will tell. You know, uh, you know the the optimists will say there's always a chance, and there is always a chance. You know, um, but hopefully at some point in uh, in my lifetime I'd like to come along to another European night here because that's one thing it's as as fans you know they live for it because they get, you know the journeys away uh, abroad in Europe um, get to see places and that see so and they're envious of us as players because we're the one there you know doing it but one thing I always wish I could do as well is be on the other side as well, yeah. you know, and be a fan going to games and and seeing what it was on a big night, you know, and and get the journey, whether it be with bus, train, plane, you know, uh, and all the camaraderie between the, the fans. We missed that. We missed all that. Um, so we were, we were certainly not going there just to um, make up the numbers and, and stop getting a heavy defeat, you know. And then obviously, as the game progressed, you know, we were in it, we created a few chances. Um, and then with, with Danny's goal, you know, you're suddenly sitting, as they say, at half time saying, Wow, well, we've got a chance, we have got a chance, you know, 45 minutes. Um, eventually it wasn't to be, you know. Um, but I think everybody connected with the club, you know, had a, a great sense of pride. Uh, the whole occasion, you know, the whole the European experience, and as I say, it's 25 years down the line, it's still talked about, you know, very fondly with everybody that I know here. We well, can kind of round up the interview there, as you would know, we can speak for hours about these these times, but you mentioned about a sense of pride, and, and it's nice to think that maybe a lot of the younger generation as well are going to wear these jerseys with pride round about the town and acknowledge what uh, what these lads achieved on behalf of your club. As always, we thank you for your time, Colin. No, you're welcome. Uh, as I say, I always enjoy coming back here. You know, there's been a lot of fantastic memories, and again, we go back to it. You know, for a lad getting brought up just in the road um, to pull on the jersey and, and, and play for a club was a was a great honour, and uh, I'll never forget that. Tom, always nice to chat with you. We're here for a lovely wee trip down memory lane. Um, this magnificent jersey's been recreated. Tell us, how do we get it? You get it, it's actual cost is 49.99. You get it from uh, the Wraith Rovers online shop. Um, I think it should be ready next week. Uh, and it's to you know commemorate a fantastic season we had 25 years ago. Um, you've had Colin Cameron there uh, putting it 
on and letting her see what it looks like. It still looks pretty fit, Colin, after 25 years. Um, and it's just something for the fans to, you know, have another strip to commemorate that, as I keep saying, that fantastic season. It's a magnificent copy, isn't it? I've been very fortunate to see it up uh, really kind of close range. And, and anyone who's got the cup final jersey will know the, the quality that's involved here. They've yeah. done quite a job, Ruri and his team, of getting it absolutely spot on, haven't they? Yeah, a big thank you to Ruri. Um, Laura is the team that helped them, you know, to get this put together. You know, there's a lot, a lot of work goes in, you know, behind the scenes to get one of these things ongoing. And we just hope that it's going to be a success for the fans, especially in this daft season that we seem to be experiencing just now. You know, it's it's something something unique, something that you could have that takes you back to 25 years ago. <laughs>